over 50? Over 60? So what? I'm Carol and welcome to the show. Now a lot of you viewers watching will be boomers, baby boomers and boomers rule the world. I just read that there's over 77 million boomers in the US and we've got in Australia well over 8 million. There's a lot of us. So let's have some fun together. Now we can get out and about, we can have more fun. But some of you might still be a little bit anxious or fearful. So we're going to have a great chat today with Joe Bussatil with some fantastic tips and strategies. Then, please join me in the fitness segment. Join me. I met someone the other day. He said, I love watching your fitness segment. That's not the point. You're supposed to join in with me, please. And lastly, have you thought about taking up yoga later in life? Men and women are doing it and loving it. Today on Energy for Life, we welcome back clinical hypnotherapist and counsellor Joe Bussatil. Now, Joe talked to us last time about hypnotherapy, what it is, and how you might like to use it and add it to your toolkit to help with mental and emotional challenges. Maybe you're afraid or anxious about change, about changing yourself, things that are changing around you. Well, today we're going to discuss fear. And Hi, Joe, and welcome to Over 50 So What? Hello. Hi, Carol. You've got people out there saying to themselves, it's not going to be okay when I get out and about. How do you get them to change that story? Sure. To, so it's, it's going to be fine. Exciting. Yeah. Well, firstly, it's connecting with the statement of I'm okay. So it's not going to be okay out there. Again, what is out there? What Can we control it? No. But if I know I'm okay, then I will then focus on what I, that's, you know, if we compare that to the toilet paper thing, remember how everyone went, the people that went and bought toilet paper? Yes. That's the same as this. Those people didn't think they were going to be okay. Now, I never went to the, to the shops to buy toilet paper. I always had it. It was always there because I knew it would be there. But in those people's minds, there was a panic. And that's the same thing with what they think is out there. Now, in saying that, there is, we have to be kind to ourselves because we have been in lockdown for a very long time in Melbourne, haven't we? And so, I, I mean, I remember when I went out in, in the car for the first time, I was feeling a bit anxious because I didn't have to drive for a long time. And then all of a sudden there was traffic and people. So I think it's important just to notice that if you are feeling a bit anxious, that it's natural, right? But just tell yourself, always ask yourself the question to you, why do I feel uncomfortable? What's going on for me? How can I deal with this? And you might, you'll get the answer. The answer would be maybe take it easy or maybe realize that it's not as bad as you think, but don't listen to the story, which means you're not involved anymore, right? The story is always about the, what's outside of you, which would be it's scary or the traffic or, oh my God, the virus is out there. And that's not real. It's not real because you're not in that situation until you're in that situation. Does that, you know, does that make sense? Well, fear is false evidence appearing real. Oh, exactly. It's false evidence. And I think, especially the last two years with COVID, more people have got mental health problems now. And if we just keep ignoring it, it means that there's just going to be a lot more suffering. So I've seen that my business has tripled, quadrupled with people with anxiety, right? So I hate seeing people in pain and suffering. And so you have to try and accept that sometimes we need to talk to someone because the world is moving faster. Do, would you agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I sort of feel that if someone's trying to do all the work themselves, it could take them 10 years to sort out something that you might sort out in a month. You know, I don't think we have the opportunity to do it on our own anymore. You know, because think about how quickly now it is. You know, in the last few years, imagine going to the movies, we'd pick a movie and that would be it. Now we have Netflix and there's a thousand movies. Yeah. Right? So that's what we call silent stress. That's silent stress, right? The world has got that now. So everyone's got silent stress now and they don't even know it. Where we've got decisions to make, we've got menus and food to pick and what, you know, all of that stuff is just being built up on top of everything else. So that's why I think we can't expect it to go away. I mean, it doesn't have to be a therapist as such, but they have to utilize at least some sort of form to deal with their stress. And it could be they do yoga or they do exercise or they do something, but 
I think that the day of saying I don't like want to, I don't want to talk about it. We have to really encourage people by you know talking about it. Yeah, that's why you're on the show, so we can get people talking about it. It's, it's not scary, really. I think I think people think that therapists are scary. They're not. It's not scary. I, I have fun with my clients. It's it's really just about sharing something that you may not share with everyone because you don't always tell everyone the truth. Now, with the pandemic, you just mentioned the last two years, a lot of people have anxiety and people watching this may still be suffering anxiety about getting out and about, even though we're allowed out and about and being with people. What advice would you say to these people that are now still anxious about getting out and about? Now, what is the foundation of adapting? It's knowing that regardless of what happens, you're always going to be okay. So I think the people that are scared still, there's an element of them thinking that they're not going to be okay. And remember what I said earlier, if you say that you're not going to be okay, your subconscious mind will then look for things that are not okay. And then all of a sudden you've got this world of things not being okay, but really all we've got is ourselves in the moment. So if here I am sitting here right now, what's going on outside, I can't control that. Rather, I can listen to what's going on and then adapt to it. Also trust yourself, trust yourself. You know that when you go out, you're going to do the right things. You know you're not going to put yourself at risk. And if you feel like you're going to put yourself at risk, then make sure you have boundaries. So, okay, I'm going to go out, but I'm not going to go out when it's busy, or I'm not going to go out to a place where it's going to be crowded. So there's no need to fear then. You know, if you're fearful in your own lounge room, that is false evidence, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. So you're missing out on maybe your interactions with your family or friends instead you're worrying about something that hasn't even happened yet the reason why the story part is important to notice is because the story would make us it i call story the story gossip that's all it is it's just you telling a story to people around you or yourself about the other person so you end up blaming everyone now what does that really mean it means that it gets you off the hook from doing any work on yourself and that's what most australians do Right now, you mentioned before about hypnotherapy. Now, it's interesting. Only 31% of Australians go to a therapy because they're stuck in the story. And so we live in a culture now as well because of social media. It's easier to go on social media or it's easier to talk about someone else. And that gets us to project how we're feeling. And that does make us feel better for a little while. But we're not doing any of the work on ourselves. Now, you know, really, as we move into the millennium and we move into the future, no one's going to rescue us. We have to, because and the world is going to move faster. So I'm a really strong advocate. I compare therapy to no different to brushing your teeth. You should be, we brush our teeth every day about not going to the dentist, right? And getting a cavity. Well, mental health should be seen the same way. You should be doing something every day to help you have a healthy mental state, right? We want to be proactive. So it means that you're solid as you, the more you practice, the more you do things that make you more connected to resilience and being mindful and being grounded. When things do happen, then it means that you uh, is impacted, right? So you don't want to be reactive. So that was one of the biggest things, again, that I noticed through COVID. All the people that I know and all the people that I've been seeing as clients, resilient. They got on with it. People that don't have that, even my own family, they got stuck, they got scared, they got, you know, traumatized, they got panicky, and some of them are still there now, right? In reality, we're still alive, we're still here, right? So we're okay, but they didn't do anything about themselves. Instead, they complained about the government, they complained about COVID, they complained about everyone. They didn't work, they didn't do any complaining about themselves. That's the key. You've got to go, why am I feeling this way? And that gets us to change. Be excited because really change is an opportunity. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Joe. It's been an absolute pleasure.
Today we're at Pippa's Innocence Yoga. We're going to take a peek into the world of yoga, see what happens. I'm going to attempt to do some, and I'm not a yoga person, so that's going to be interesting. A lot of people think it's all about mobility, but it's so much more than that. So we're going to meet Pippa herself and some of the fantastic yoga enthusiasts. Hi Pippa, thanks for letting us come and do a yoga class. Oh, you're most welcome. This is going to be a very interesting experience. Now with yoga, you've got Hatha yoga, you've got laughter yoga, and you've got hot yoga, <laughs> and you do Iyengar yoga. Can you sort of talk us through all the different types of yoga? Oh well, it's all yoga, but um, over the years we've got so many different kinds that suit different people. So uh, I do Hatha yoga which is the classic yoga, which is, um, Hatha means sun and moon, so opposites interrelating, coming together, mind and body, breath and spirit. And the Iyengar part is where you're more aligned, worried about, not worried, but <laughs> concerned <laughs> about, about your alignment and getting your body into the right sort of um, position. Uh, and for that, we use props so that people can experience uh, what it's like to be in that pose. And then there's, like you said, hot yoga, where you're in a, a 38 degree room and you're doing quite active yoga, so you know, you're really sweating. Um, there's vinyasa yoga, which means you keep the flow going all, most of the class. You would keep flow happening. And so you can do slow flow or fast flow. So, you know, depending on everybody's um, level and fitness level yeah there's so many different kinds so you said in Iyengar you use props uh, so it's not feather dusters and things so what kind of props <laughs> well, do you use <laughs> we're sitting I'm sitting on one right now a yoga block <laughs> yes <laughs> and straps uh, uh, for students to be able to pull uh, their body forward or lift a leg up so if they're not happy doing it, not happy, but they're, if they're doing it and they're finding it difficult, we use a strap <clears throat> or a chair if, if people need to use a chair. What you're saying is that if you've got limited mobility, which most of us do as we get older, you've got devices that will help you to do yoga in a chair or to work within yeah. your own limitations. Yes, that's right. So you came to yoga quite late in life. You're almost 50 when you started doing yoga. So that's how right. did this happen? What was that journey like? Well, I suppose it was because I got to a point where I wanted something a bit more spiritual in my life and uh, I was doing something called Reiki, which probably most of the viewers have heard about Reiki, it's a hands-on healing and um, that's very uh, linked to Eastern philosophies and, and through that I came to doing yoga classes and, and then I was so interested in it that I asked my yoga teacher if I could... Uh, uh, find a, a yoga school to actually learn to be a yoga teacher and she took me on so that was wonderful. So what would you say to someone who's over 50 and they've never ever done, done yoga and, but and they'd like to know more about it, like to give it a go, what would you say to someone later in life trying it out? I would tell them to just come and try it out <laughs> and to listen to their own body and to be careful of any injuries they have. So you can modify according to people's limitations and injuries, etc. Yes. So what happens with the beginner when they come for the first time? Do you have like a special beginner's session? Um, well, in this uh, area, we don't. have a, Everybody mixes together and I just uh, try to give new people modifications and ask them to use a chair if they need to at the beginning. Elizabeth, you're a newbie to yoga. How long have you been doing it for? This is actually my third lesson, but I did do it a few years ago and I just loved it. I love the class and the ladies, even though it's only three classes. So I'm really chuffed, really chuffed <laughs> to be here. Tell me why you decided to start doing yoga again. Um, wrong side of the mid fifties and achy. You know, the morning walk when you're like a penguin before everything settles in. <laughs> That's me. And so you feel after even three lots of yoga that you feel better about it? Honestly, yes. Yeah, I can feel it now. Just, you know, a little bit more mobility. Yes, yeah, so it's doing good. So tell us more about the chair yoga and the bed yoga. You can do it in your <laughs> bed as well. I'm sure people are intrigued by that. <laughs> 
Well, if you're breathing, you could, be, you could say you're doing yoga. So you can do your breathing exercises in bed. You can do your stretching. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you have a good stretch over your head and turn on one side and turn to the other, you can do that in your bed. You can bring your knees up towards your chest and stretch out. So this just so, and lift your arms up towards the ceiling and open your heart area up. There's so many things you can do. Um, even lying in a bed. <laughs> Talking about the breathing, now this is a very important part of yoga and a sort of part of a meditative practice. Can you talk us through the mindfulness meditative breathing aspect? Yeah, well, we all are breathing, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so we can use the breath as a meditation. So you can focus on a part of the body and you can breathe in and out and just get that focus on something you've always got with you. And then there's different forms of what's called pranayama, which is the control of the breath. And you can do um, uh, kapalbhati, it's called, which is like a snap of the belly in. You, you breathe in and then you snap it out. And this is called, the sh it's actually the shining skull breath. Okay, let's take a nice couple of deep breaths in and out. Mm. And then let's use we're concentrating on the exhale, the inhale takes care of itself. <laughs> and um, even when we're doing laughter yoga, um, you're using that sort of energy, pulling in the belly without even thinking about it. <laughs> So if someone's thinking of doing yoga, how would they go about finding, not all of them can come to your lovely classes at Pippa's Innocence. <laughs> if someone's a bit mature in particular, how would you suggest they find an appropriate yoga class? Uh, well, they could uh, look at their neighbourhood houses or their community centres. A lot of those centres run yoga classes. I suppose you could ask your local council uh, where these centres are. Also gyms, a lot of gyms now run yoga classes and they all some of them run yoga classes for older people and um, I understand you also do yoga by zoom don't you or live yes. stream it yeah yeah we do yeah that's right um uh, even this morning uh because some people don't want to come into the uh, club or they can't come for physical reasons um also because of COVID we do a, a zoom as well as the class face to face. Come on, give it a go. You can only, you've got to try it a few times. Don't just come once and say, oh no, my back hurt. Or I think you have to come back and, you know, do it again. Give it, give it some time, yes. And uh, it's, it's a great exercise, you know. It's a great mind exercise too, mind and body. So, so what would you say to a bloke sitting at home thinking, oh, I don't know about yoga. Give it a go, try. It's, uh, as I mentioned before, it's good for everything. It's uh, absolutely, I mean, uh, doing yoga, I encourage everyone to do it. Well, thanks, Pippa. Oh, I can't wait to get in the class now and meet all of your other lovely participants. Fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful to meet you, Carol. I did enjoy my yoga class. It did make me slow down, but that's not a bad thing. What have you done that's new or different today? If you'd like more info on yoga or Joe Bussettle, just head over to the website carolohalloran.com. Please join us on our Facebook and YouTube groups, Over 50 So What? We'll be up to date with everything then. And keep that five minute fitness going every day. Keep active. When it comes to trying something new, Pippa, Sam and Sybil said, give it a go. Try it out. You'll never know what you may be missing out on. I'm Carol, over 50. So what? Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. 
jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?